Hello everybody, my name is Elizabeth Lawrence and I'm doing my project on queuing theory and its applications on amusement park rides. My advisor is Dr. Riedel. So let's get started. I'm going to start with my abstract. So we encounter and must wait in queues every single day. Whether it is at a stoplight or at the grocery store, our world is inundated with queues to make systems run more efficiently. The main objective of this project is to study queuing theory and to analyze amusement park ride queues to identify what factors may affect how long a rider may wait. We begin with an overview and introduction of queuing theory, including a description of different types of queues, important queuing parameters such as arrival rate and service rate, as well as behaviors that are often present in queues such as jockeying, reneging, and bulking. We then analyze quantitative data of daily recorded wait times collected throughout each day from Expedition Everest and Disney World. Through data collected from a survey we developed, we also study human behaviors when waiting in lines for amusement park queues. All right, so when considering the subject of wait times, it's important to understand the concept of queues. A queue is a line awaiting a service. An example of a queue could be a checkout line at the grocery store, computer procedures waiting to be executed, or the particular interest of the study, a line to get on a, an amusement park ride. A queuing model is used in order to predict queue links and time spent waiting. Queuing analysis is used to optimize both cost and customer experience for the system. For example, when scheduling workers for a shift, one might weigh the benefits of scheduling more employees providing better and faster service or scheduling, scheduling fewer employees saving on wages. Completely eliminating waiting for something altogether would not be cost effective as operating the place of service at full capacity 100% of the time, regardless of necessity, would be costly. Said Best by Hamdi Taha, our only recourse is to strike a balance between cost of offering a service and the cost of waiting experienced by customers. So there's different types of queues in which queue discipline, the order in which customers are selected from a queue, varies. The first and most popular type of queue is the first in, first out queue. An example of this would be a line at the grocery store or printer jobs waiting to be executed. The next type of queue here is the last in, first out. An example of this type of queue may be unloading groceries from your car as the first ones you put in would be removed last or how we think that a plane should be loaded, as in the people that go in last come out first. It would be so much faster. Um, two more types of queues are the service and random order queue and the priority queue. The service and random order queue would be one in which you don't know the arrival order of the customers, therefore the service is random. The priority queue is one that gives priority to certain members of the queue, for example, a fast pass line at an amusement park. It's also important to consider the queue size and the population source size. An unlimited queue size means the queue can continue if it's necessary to do so, while a limited queue size means the queue has a cutoff point in which no more customers can join past that point. For the population source size, an infinite, an infinite population source has an unlimited number of customers that can possibly join the queue, while a finite population source has a limited number of customers that can possibly join the queue. There's also different types of human behavior in queues. Of course, there's the default be behavior of accepting the queue and waiting until you receive a service, but there's also three other reactions that might affect the queue. The first of these is jockeying, when someone in one line sees a shorter line and exits the line they are in to get into the shorter line. One might also renege, which happens when someone is in line and decides the wait is too long and removes themselves from that line. And lastly, one might balk at the line and decide not to get in the line upon first approach because it's too long. So one of the Basic parameters in queuing theory is um, the arrival rate, which is the number of arrivals per unit time. So lambda is the mean arrival rate. One over lambda is the mean time between arrivals, so inter-arrivals, 
and lambda times t equals average arrivals in t time units. For example, if lambda equals four arrivals per hour, this example down here, then the average time between arrival arrivals would be one over lambda equals one over four, which is a quarter of an hour. And the average arrivals per hour would be lambda times t, which would be four arrivals per hour. And another basic parameter in queuing theory is the service rate. So mu is the mean service rate, one over mu, the mean service time, and mu times t equals the average job served in t time units. So a good example of this, if mu equals 10 jobs served per minute, then the average time to serve a job would be one over mu, and that would be 0 0.1 minutes, and the average job served per minute would be mu times t, and 10 jobs per minute. When creating a queuing model based on independent arrivals occurring one at a time, it's best to use the Poisson arrival process. With this, the probability of an arrival in each time interval depends only on the length of the time interval. This distribution can be modeled as it is right here, where t equals the time until next arrival. And then so for t greater or equal to zero, the probability that the time until the next arrival less than or equal to t in the time units equals one minus e raised to the negative lambda times t. Oops. And then the probability of um, the time until next arrival greater than little t would be one minus that first formula, which would just equal e raised to the negative lambda times t. And then the expected value of big T, the time until next arrival, would be one over lambda. And that would be the average time between intervals. Okay, so with the Poisson distribution, you can analyze multiple arrivals. And so first you let x of t equal the number of arrivals before a certain time t. So then the probability of x of t equal to k equals this formula right here. Um, yes, yeah, so the expected value of x of t equals lambda times t, which is the mean arrivals in those t time units. So then for the queuing model of mean service times, you can use the formula right here. So big S equals the average service time, which is equal to, the expected value of S is equal to one over mu. So for S greater than or equal to zero, the probability of the mean service time less than or equal to little s equals one minus e raised to the negative mu times s. As you can see, this is very similar to the Poisson arrival process, but with mean service time. So here, we, when creating a queuing model of long run averages, where lambda is less than mu, the system has two components, Q and service area, which make up the system. And so here are some of the formulas for that. So L would equal the mean number of jobs in the system. And then L with the subscript of Q equals the mean number of jobs in the Q. And then W would equal the average time of time a job is in the system so the whole time that that job is in the system and then w with the subscript of q would be the average time a job is just in that q and then w equals the time that the job is in the q plus um, one over mu the mean service rate.
So for this project, I found a data set for Expedition Everest in Disney World. Disney World, located in Orlando, Florida, is a large complex made up of four theme parks, um, Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Animal Kingdom, and Hollywood Studios. The theme parks pride themselves on being the ultimate entertainment spot for rides, shows, and events for all ages, with most entertainment geared toward young children. I found data sets showing the wait times for 14 of the most popular rides in the Disney World parks from January 1st of 2012 through December 31st of 2019. These data sets are CSV files that contain approximately 6 to 25 randomly recorded posted standby wait times daily. These are the wait times that Disney posts at each ride for the public to see. There's also a variable of the actual wait time for the queue in this data set that is randomly recorded sometimes up to five times a day and sometimes it's not recorded at all. So that would be the actual time that the person waited but the variable that has a lot of data points is the time that Disney posts of the actual of what they believe the wait time is at that time. If a data point was closed at the time of the random recording then the value is recorded as negative 999 so if the ride was closed for whatever reason. Along with these 14 CSV files there's also a data dictionary, a file containing the facts for each ride, and a file containing very extensive metadata common to all 14 data sets. I found on the Expedition Everest data set, I, I focused on that data set, which is one of the, those 14 data sets of wait times. Um, Expedition Everest is a four minute long ride that is known as one of the most popular rides in Animal Kingdom. So it's pretty busy. With this, we know that the mean service time, one over mu equals four minutes. So that's what we know from the four minute long ride. And since the mean of the data was skewed from the negative 999 data points when the ride was closed, I copied all the posted wait time data points that were greater than zero into a new data set and then computed some of the descriptive statistics. The table containing the mean and the spread is right here. So since it had those negative 999 data points from whenever it was closed or in maintenance, like the mean was a lot smaller. So here, the mean posted wait time of the 1400, 900 or 14,927 recorded posted wait times from January 1st, 2012 until December 31st, 2019 is approximately 29.27 minutes. You can see that right here. The median posted wait time is 25 minutes, which is right here. And the maximum is 140 minutes. And the min minimum is five minutes. This means that on average, a guest at Animal Kingdom can expect to wait approximately 30 minutes to get onto this ride with a standard deviation of about 20 minutes. That's right here. Okay, so here is a histogram of that variable with the frequencies. So here it is, um, 15, 10, 5, yeah. So here, this histogram shows that the wait time length and frequency have a negative relationship as the frequencies of the wait times are decreasing while the wait time lengths are increasing. So it has a negative relationship as one increases, the other decreases. Knowing that the mean service time, which in this case would be the ride length, is 4 minutes, and that the mean waiting time in the queue is 29.27 minutes, as we see up here, we can calculate the mean waiting time in the system. So this is that um, the mean waiting time of a job in the queue, which was 29.27 minutes. That's how long you wait in line. And this is the mean actual service time, which is four minutes. So then we can find W, which would be the mean time in the job, or of the job in the whole entire system. So that would be W equals W with the subscript of Q, which is 29.27, plus the mean service time, 
which was four minutes, being 33.27 minutes. With that, we can say that the mean waiting time in the system is 33.27 minutes. This means that the whole ride experience from entering the queue until getting off the ride is on average 33.27 minutes. So next, we conducted a survey, a survey of 11 questions listed below, or listed right here, through Qualtrics. The purpose of the survey was to collect data on human behavior when approaching a long line at an amusement park. We received 135 responses, which was awesome, but there was one missing response, so it was actually 134 um, responses that we could analyze. We especially wanted to analyze the responses to a few questions that I'll show on the next slide. So question number one, what's your age? And all, all of the questions on this are gonna be multiple choice. So what's your age? How many children do you have under the age of 18 as that could affect wanting to wait in the line as well? What level of interest do you have in the rides when visiting amusement parks in comparison to the other attractions, such as like the shows and the games? Do you enjoy visiting amusement parks? So that's really important because if someone doesn't like it, then can't really use their data. So here, this is one of the first questions we really wanted to get a response on. If you're in a long line for a ride and you see a line for another ride that is shorter, how likely are you to remove yourself from the line you are in and join the shorter line? So that's an example of jockeying and we wanted to see how people would respond to that. Next question we were really interested in hearing as well. What is the maximum amount of time that you would be willing to wait in line in order to get onto a ride? That's really interesting as well because some people don't want to wait at all and some people are willing to wait if it's a really good ride or if it's new for a multitude of reasons. So we wanted to get some feedback on that one. Next one important as well. If you're waiting in a long line for a ride, how likely are you to renege? Which from before we said was remove yourself from the line. So if you're in line and you decide, oh, this isn't worth it, and so you get out of line. The next one was, which factors do you consider most when choosing rides? So this one was one where you rank it, like what was most important to you when choosing a ride from one being the most important to five being the least important. It turned out this was actually a little bit harder to analyze as um, the SPSS, the data software system I was looking at, took it as like five different, I mean, so did Excel and a bunch of, di or the few different software I used took it as like five different questions, but I was able to figure out which one because it also took it as a numeric answer. So, but still it was interesting to see what people said of what was most important when choosing a ride, like how new the ride was or if everybody else said it was really good or if it was really long, like 20, 30 minutes. So that was good to see. Um, next one, during which season would you most like to visit an amusement park? I didn't really use as much data as much, but it was interesting to see as well. To what degree do long lines affect your experience at an amusement park? I was interested in this answer to see how much it would affect their experience and make them want to come back. And the last question, when you visit amusement parks, how often do you experience long lines for rides? So if so to hear in the past, their experience of how long the ride, how long the lines were. So, so with that fifth question, we were trying to see if they're likely to jockey between lines so I used SPSS to analyze the frequency tables of um, the frequency table of this. And so I looked at the valid percent column because it does not take into account the one missing piece response. Um, it excludes that. So this means that the sample size in is equal to four or 134. So here we can see that approximately 62% of the people in the sample are either somewhat likely or extremely likely to jockey between amusement park rides. So we can see that right here. And it's conveniently added up right here for you cumulative 
percent, so about 62 percent, are at least somewhat likely to chalk you between amusement park rides. So for the next one, on this one we're looking to find out how many in the sample are willing to wait longer periods of time. The SPSS frequency table um, from that we can see that only approximately 34 percent are willing to wait over 30 minutes in line to get onto a ride. So this is for the maximum amount, so only 34% of the sample were wanting to wait longer than 30 minutes to get onto a ride. Um, okay, moving on. So with this question, we were interested in seeing how many people in the sample were likely to renege um, so looking at this frequency table, we can see that approximately 52% of the people in the sample are at least somewhat likely to renege, which we'll see right here. I used this right here, cumulative percent, 52%. So at least 52% were somewhat likely or extremely likely to renege and remove themselves from the line. So reneging, jockeying, jockeying, and balking could also affect one's experience at the park as the behaviors could come about as a sign of frustration or inconvenience having to wait in a line. So that's why that was really important. Um, in this question, we ask the person taking the survey to what degree do long lines affect their experience at the amusement park ride or at the amusement park and as we can see in the frequency table, only 6.7% admitted that long lines at amusement parks affected their experience at the park little or not at all. The other 93.3% of the samples said to have, that would be right here, said to have the long lines affect their experience at least a moderate amount with 35% of the sample claiming their experience to be affected a lot by having to wait in long lines. And then this one, we're also interested in seeing how often those in the sample felt they encountered long lines for rides at amusement parks in the past. So on this frequency table, over half of the sample claimed they encountered long lines most of the time. So that's right here, over half said they encountered them most of the time. And 99.3% of people in the sample claimed they encountered long lines at least sometimes when visiting amusement parks. Right here. So, everyone, almost everybody except for one person in the 134 person sample said they at least sometimes encounter long lines for rides. So, through this project, I was able to study queuing theory and analyze a real-life example of a queue with two different data sets. By using SPSS, I was able to identify some of the important descriptive statistical numbers that would eventually help me calculate the mean time to be in the system. Through the analysis of the survey we conducted, I was able to see what behaviors were likely to affect a queue at an amusement park ride. I was able to draw the conclusion that majority of the sample are at least somewhat likely to jockey or reneg in a long line at an amusement park ride, I was also able to see that long lines affect most people in the sample to a certain degree when at amusement parks, since only 6.7% of the people said that long lines affect them little to none, little to not at all. As 99.3% of the people in the sample claim to encounter long lines at least some of the time when at amusement parks, cues moving efficiently and swiftly is very important at amusement parks in order to make the experience the most enjoyable for the guests. So for future work, um, I learned quite a bit about queuing theory while doing this project, and I'd like to dive deeper into seeing how Disney calculates the posted wait time and which factors are used when making these calculations. Uh, I'm really curious to see if it is a specific formula with different variables that dictate the posted wait time, or if it's when the queue reaches a certain length and measure. I'm really interested in seeing that, so I might try and dig deeper and see if I can find 
some information on that in the future. Um, overall, I really enjoyed this project. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for listening to this. Hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye. Once again, my name is Elizabeth Lawrence. Thank you so much, Dr. Radel. That was my advisor. Thanks. <laughs>